Hello everyone, peace of the Lord to all. Uh, this video, I want people to, uh, always I want people really to copy and please change the name of the video. Uh, make it the name you like because that will make it appear in different page. The whole point is down, of downloading the movie, I mean the, the video, is you uh, spreading the knowledge. Uh, not just to have it in the same page because then we will have the same people who saw it and they will not click on it. So change the name, make some change in the way fit with the topic and that will make it appear in different place. So today we will talk about why the Bible is corrupted and how. Simply this is the topic we spoke about before but today we will have different approach to make it more clear for those who still are not convinced and how stupid the accusation the Muslims come with. You see, if an, if an atheist, he said that, he have his point to say. Because simply he had nothing to do with the book anyway. If, uh, if a Hindu, he said that, he have his point to say. Because he is a Hindu, he have nothing to do with the Bible anyway. But a Muslim, who he believe, that this book is being given from his God, Allah. You see, the, the Quran is full of verses speaking about Allah is the one who gave the Torah, Allah is the one who gave the, the Gospel and the Torah, and then Allah did not protect the Gospel and the Torah. Now, the Muslim, the first thing they say when it's come to the uh, what they call the corruption of the Gospel or the Torah, they say that you corrupted. We. Now, is that true? According to Islam, no. According to Islam, yes, but in the same time, no. Which means Islam, because it's a, it's a stupid religion made by a stupid mental idiot, so it contradicts itself. So uh, the Christians, the Jews, they are the one who corrupt their book. But I will make you see Shabir Ali proving the opposite. You know Shabir Ali, right? You know him, this guy who ran away from debating me and he will keep running forever. You know why. This is Shabir Ali. Someone will ask him how the Quran was preserved. Listen to the answer and let us see how stupid Muslims are, especially those who claim to be smart. You see, Shabir Ali is the kind, if you ask him a question and that question is real, he will never answer you. But as long as the question is like, eh, how the Quran preserved, he will give you a speech. But because they are relaxing, they make statement which destroy their own other statements. Listen carefully. They could do this in their own memories. And so uh, the, the sequence then of things was by explicit divine instruction. And uh, the second uh, point I made was that uh, the divine involvement is implicit and that everything that people do uh, is by a divine plan. The Muslim belief is that nothing wor works outside of the Qadr or the plan of Allah, uh, the creator and the fashioner of the heavens and the earth. Collecting it from the memories or bringing all the written pieces together, asking how a certain word is to be spelt in writing and so on. So they're making certain human judgments. But it seems that uh, implicitly there is the hand of God working through all of this, to use that expression. Uh, in, and, and we have the support for this from the Quranic text itself. In Surah 15, verse number 9, it says, Inna nahnu nazalna dhikra wa inna lahu We, that is God, has, uh, we have revealed the reminder, referring here to the Quran, and we are its guardian, or its guardians. And God himself is protecting the, the Quran, whereas in the case of previous scriptures in Surah 5, uh, the, the previous scriptures are spoken about as that which has been entrusted uh, to the priests uh, and, and the rabbis. It's together asking how a certain word is to be spelt in writing and so on. So they're making certain human judgments. But it seems that uh, implicitly there is the hand of God working through all of this, to use that expression. Uh, in, and, and we have the support for this from the Quranic text itself. In Surah 15, verse number 9, it says, Inna nahnu nazalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. We... Wrong verse. Simply, have nothing to do with the Quran. Because how you know this is about the Quran? 
the word dhikr mentioned in the Quran many places it, it, not only uh, it can be anything from the word of God supposedly and let us show you the proofs and the reference just to show you that this guy is a liar if we go to the Quran uh, this is this is chapter 21 verse number 7 remember chapter 21 verse number 7 and this is the word zikr a zikr in Arabic all right this is the word he's talking about it's mentioned in the Quran many times it's written in the same exact way so he cannot say oh this is a different word this is the word he's talking about inna anzalna adh-dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun now he is claiming that the word adh-dhikr mean the Quran how you know if this word is the same mention for the Torah and the gospel let us see the interpretation or even the translation for the verse if we go and see the translation you will see it says and we sent not before you Muhammad but men whom you revealed so ask people of the reminder he is the one who translated the word dhikr as reminder remember in the video I will play it again which means the scriptures the Torah and the Injil but he just quote for us a verse saying that Allah he is going to protect a dhikr according to him this is the Quran how you know it says according to your translation the reminder and according to your verses here in the Quran it is the scriptures which is the Torah and the Injil not the Quran because simply the Quran does not exist yet the Quran is in a process right now to be given it's not given yet so when he said that this is about a verse Allah he said he preserved only the Quran this is a joke because there's many verses in the Quran prove the opposite we can show you more proofs in chapter 21 verse 105 here we go we find the word a dhikr again you see it's the same word if you go to the translation for this word a dhikr you will see this is not about the Quran let us see what it is here we go you can choose any translation you want of your choice let us see what as 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 zikr is it is a zubur huh a zubur and a torah and the injil and after them all after all those books the quran came so the word a zikr here is coming for a zubur i.e. the revealed holy books the torah the Injil, the Gospel, the Psalms, and the Quran. You see the hypocrisy? So the word a dhikr means all of those books. According to him, it's only the Quran. It's a fabrication. Why he's saying that? Because that would be a contradiction for the Quran. How you say Allah, he is the one saying he will preserve it and then later it's not preserved. How we say it, Allah will preserve it all, and then later we will say that Allah, He could not preserve it all. So He have to say, oh, oh must, the word as a dhikr here must be only, only the Quran. Fabrication, Mr. Fabricator. Now here we notice, He will say something very funny and very stupid, which is enough to destroy the rest of Islam if there is anything left listen to this what this guy will say that is God has uh, we have revealed the reminder referring here to the Quran and we are its guardians, or its guardians uh, God himself is protecting the the Quran whereas in the case of previous scriptures in Surah 5 uh, the, the previous scriptures are spoken about as that which has been entrusted uh, to the priests uh, and, and the rabbis they, they have been made the, the ones to preserve it but whereas the others have been made responsible for preserving the previous texts God is saying in the Quran that he himself is responsible for preserving also oh, Allah saying guys he trusted the rabbi to protect the previous books but it doesn't work so I decide to preserve it myself this time look how stupid how silly this argument is what this Abdul is saying to us that Allah he made a stupid decision he trusted the rabbi because you know when you say the word trust I trust someone it's mean I believe in him 
it means I am not the Almighty. Because if the Almighty is Almighty, he should not trust someone he is corrupt. How, how we know he's corrupt? Because obviously they are accusing them of, that, of corruption of the, of the Bible. They must be corrupt. No one, no decent man will corrupt his holy book unless he is corrupt himself. He must be satanic, not only corrupt, he must be very evil. So he, Allah, he trusted the rabbi, but the trust was wrong. It was a stupid idea. And I find myself, I need to correct it. So today I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to do that again because it was a stupid mistake. And I promise you, I will never, never do it again. I try it once, I will never try it again. This is the stupid logic of this religion. It's called Islam. Can you find me more stupid than Allah? Because Allah, he is trusting the wrong ones to protect his book. And Allah is the one who is the divine. And he just said to us that no human being can do anything except from his, the plan of Allah, not against the plan of Allah. So how this work? It's stupid. It's funny. It's dummy. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. 